Okay, everybody, welcome to Try Strength July and August day two. Get ready for a new set of exercises for the second day of the week. So, starting off with an exercise that's going to help you with your mobility. Remember, we did crab walks the other day, now we're doing bear crawls. So, you can see that I've lifted my right hand and my left foot off the floor at the same time. So, as with the crab walks, it's important to get this cross combination. Okay, so anytime you lift your left foot, your right hand's got to come off the floor. When you lift your right foot, your left hand's got to come across the floor. Other things that you need to know, look at my back position here, horizontal to the ground at all times. Watch how my knees stay just a few inches above the grounds. Okay, so just to go back there, so that's bear crawls. You do 20 paces, as you did with the crab walks. After a little bit of practice, you should also be able to do these backwards. And you should be able to start moving laterally as well. So I could go around this patch here in a circle. All right. On to next exercise, the inchworm. A really good flexibility exercise. Start by being in this position here. You're not going to really arch at the lower back here, just push the hips forwards, get a good extension of the spine. Alright, look forwards, push your chest forwards, make sure you're not dumping into this lower back and then into the plank position and then walk forwards almost a downward dog. You see I'm not that flexible here but as you get more flexible you'll be able to walk your feet in towards your hands, walk them in and then once you've reached the limit of your extension there Walk your hands forwards out into a plank and then keep going and just push the hips down. So you're trying not to overextend at the lower back there. Right, YTLs, great exercise for upper back strength. No exercise or no weights needed for this exercise. <coughs> so start lying flat, flat out on the mat. Arms out in a Y shape, head down. You're just going to lift your chest slightly away from the floor. Lift your arms up in a Y shape. It's important to try and contract the muscles in the middle of the upper back here, the lower trapezius, so you can pull your shoulders down and back and you can feel that, that those muscles squeeze together. Then keep them squeezed together through this movement. So you've done a Y. You're out into a T. And then you're going to form an L there. You could call that a W if you like. We'll call it an L. All right, that's one rep. I tend to breathe in here. Then breathe out, breathe out, breathe in. Breathe out, breathe out, breathe in. Okay. YTL is all one repetition. Look for the numbers in the program for that day. Okay, we've got another exercise here targeting the posterior chain. This time it's called the supine bridge. So you, this is your finished position, but we'll go into the start position here. Okay, normally I'd have my hands with my palms pointing up. That means you're not tempted to push down on the ground, but you can see here I'm not pushing down. There's no tension in my fingers. You are going to push through the feet here, push through the heels and straighten out through the glutes you should not feel any hamstring tightness if you do that means you're using your hamstrings for this lift and not the gluteal muscles so here push through the heels and drive the hips up okay you should be able to get a nice straight line down here if you're a little inverted here that means you've probably got tight hip flexors you need to work on those do not go into the one-legged versions just yet. Let's do these for the moment and then we can move on to the one-legged versions next month, if possible. Next exercise, single leg, straight leg deadlift. Okay, this is really good for balance. This is a 12K dumb, uh, kettlebell. You might find it easier to use a 6K in either hand. Um, you might find it easy to use a bar and have your hands wider apart. Some people find that better for balancing okay the leg at the back here is a counterbalance you're trying to hinge at the hip here so this hip crease here you want to be pushing back and you want to be leaning out over 
Sometimes, if I'm tight in the hamstrings after cycling, I'll stand on here and then I will do the deadlift so that it touches down onto this step, which is about eight or nine inches. That means that I don't have to go all the way down to this point here. Now, at this point, you can see that I've not lifted my leg up at the back. I've gone into about a 90 degree hinge. My leg's not completely straight. There's a slight bend only go as far as you can I probably don't actually need to go any further than this because you can see I'm not actually getting my sh um, I'm not getting any more flexion here around the hip I'm actually reaching forward or well, maybe a little bit there but I need to counterbalance more with this foot up here okay and then you can see there keeping this back in neutral Really keep these abdominals tight and lift back through here. Try not to push, come back up through there. Got to lift back through here. Push the weight down through the foot. All right. It doesn't matter if you touch your foot down in between each rep here to get some balance. Be nice and controlled and then swap over. This is the plank and shoulder tap. So we did the plank rotation the other day. Here we want to minimize uh, as you have your weight on this right arm. It's possible that you might shift your hips to the right there to compensate. We want to try and avoid that if possible. You'll see there's a little bit of rotation from me but not much. You can actually, the narrower you have your hands the better this seems to be here. It's great for shoulder stability. Okay, this is lateral squat. We're using the goblet holding formation here for the kettlebell as well. Keep both feet flat on the floor. Keep the right leg straight. Sit down. So you're going to push again, push this hip crease back. Keep the knee back below the toes. Steady into position. And let's then drive up through the glute. Back to the start position and now down over the right foot. I'm a little weaker on that side so you might notice I don't get as far. Okay, two-handed kettlebell snatch. So we've been doing one-handed kettlebell snatches. You can see by the grimace on my face. I tend to pull faces while I do these exercises but that doesn't mean it's heavy. So you're going to get a kettlebell swing and as you get up to mid chest height you're then going to keep the momentum going up above your head in one go. Ready? There we go, push. On the swings all the time, from the side, the hip hinge here. Here, there, hip hinge. You're not bending forwards. Notice that my back is straight all the way through this. You might, I might want to be looking down there but you definitely don't want to be looking forward so I might want to look further down there look towards where the kettlebell has gone so we push the hips back here and then we drive forwards get some momentum and then keep the lift going over the head not much of a press on that one all right and we did these in the last one, bent knee calf raises. Well, we didn't do these, we did the alternative one. This today is straight knee calf raise. So here, we are going to be using the large, muscular, big, fleshy part of the calf, the gastronemius. So as with the bent knee ones, you should be going no more than horizontal with the heel. Don't drop it below the step. See, that's about as high as I can get there. Keep the weight on the ball of the big toe. And then, once you know how high you can get, your goal is to reach a total of 25 reps. What we don't want to be doing is seeing a little hip drive. You can see I'm leaning into the wall just a little bit. I'm stiff on this ankle, so this one's harder for me. So I have to be very careful. But you definitely don't want to be cheating there. So that's it. That is... Um, the end of this week's workouts as you can see I've got my stern face on now make sure you get these done have a good week over and out